bring and for all the time and effort that you're bringing to this as well. Okay. Wow, where do you keep this remember? Our goal is that we're done by 8.30. So what I'd like to do is just go over a review of the last meeting. And before we get started, is there anyone here tonight that wasn't here at the last meeting? Oh, great. Would you like to just introduce yourself to the group and just give us a little 30 second, what we did last time was a 30 second summary of, of your involvement. Okay, can everybody hear her and see her? I'm Melissa Hammond. Um, I have three children in the district, one in each of Tris, Jason McKenna, and high school now. Um, uh, I'm on the school board, I'm the foot of the school board, and I couldn't come last night because they were having new student orientation at high school that night. Okay, thanks, Melissa. Kenneth? Uh, Kendall Lodge. Uh, oh, I'm the town chairman for the town of Union, and uh, I grew up in the Evansville School District, uh, attending uh, um, the school, uh, Union School uh, by Union, and uh, when uh, the district was consolidated, we uh, were all, uh, I think, Union and the town center of the last two to come into the city. associate principal and athletic director in the district. Um, I've got uh, three kids currently in the district, one graduated from this district as well.
some ideas about narrowing them down, but I think it would be very helpful to get some direction from the community in terms of how you see narrowing uh, them down. And the choices that need to be narrowed are basically zero, one, or two elementary schools, um, keep the middle school where it is, relocate the middle school, replace the middle school. Those, those are the basics of the choices. And then um, there are some ideas for additions if things stay in place that, um, that go through here. So if you take a look at option one, it's to build a new middle school um, that would house 504 students. There would still be a need to renovate and put some additions onto the Grove campus as we shared last week, both uh, the elementary and the intermediate school are over their optimal capacity this year. And then to sell or repurpose the current middle school, and actually where that appears later, there are many ways that this building could be uh, repurposed and either continue to be used by the school district or by the community or a combination thereof. Um, there are costs that were um, proposed from two years ago prices essentially. So those are the costs that are in here. They're probably most relevant as comparison purposes. Who knows what the actual cost would be now a year, a year and a half forward from when, when these were developed. Um, in all of the options, they did not include what the cost of land purchase would be. You may remember um, in your packet the last time there are, I think, at least two places in there where, the, where there's a chart that estimates the amount of land that's needed. The ballpark figure that I use is 20 acres for a site. There are reasons you might want a larger site, but we probably wouldn't be able to make use of anything much smaller than, than that, given some of the other needs that we have for athletic facilities. So the total for that first option uh, without land purchase is 33.7 million. Um, the pros and cons are listed. These are the ones that um, Plunkett Research came up after a brief meeting with the, with the board and I think the administrative team. It was a mixed group, but not a very representative. So we may um, want to spend some time at our uh, tables thinking a little bit more deeply about some of those pros and cons. The last column is a decision. Um, <clears throat> we'll spend a little bit of time with you talking to your groups to say, um, if you were going to rate this on a 1 to 10, like 1 is your first option and 10 is your last, um, give it a rating and then we might be able to pull that information and just see if we're getting any consensus on these. The, the second one is to replace our current um, K-2 and 3-5 buildings with two new schools. Here we would definitely be looking at two sites, um, hopefully located within good walking areas, um, probably one on each side of town. So we would renovate the Grove campus as a middle school, demolish some of Levi Leonard to create a safer traffic flow between 3rd and 4th Street, um, repurpose the middle school, uh, need to purchase two, two land parcels, and that total about the land is about 44.3. Um, the next option, and I put it out of sequence because it's essentially the same as option two. It's just changing the grade level configuration uh, to keep K2 and 3.5. Um, the, the downside of that, which isn't listed, is it would require more busing because only half the kids Again, land purchase would be needed, and that's about 48, 49. <coughs> Option three um, is uh, to renovate and add to Grove Campus. Uh, it would be a, a capacity of 208 students is needed to meet the enrollment projection for 2016. Given the traffic issues that we have there right now, I'm not real sure where we would add. But um, that's, that's one possibility. Another is to renovate and add to J.C. McKenna. Um, again, there is no land really here to add on to. But there are districts around the state. I grew up in one, Elmbrook, which has taken two traditional school sites, purchased anywhere from two to five houses around them, which have been repurposed, in some cases torn down, and in other cases moved, built the school on the available vacant land, Torn the old school down, 
and been able to keep their schools on basically the current site that they stand. And I believe you probably have heard of other examples of, of districts that have done this. I think Appleton is in the process of doing that around one of their high schools. So that's another way in terms of, of doing this. And then there would be some uh, land for uh, land costs. Repair or model based on the facility. This is like the bare bones. This is just taking a look at the facility study that they did. They put cost estimates onto the items that are on there, and the information that's in your package shows that we've taken care of, of some of those things on the list and will continue to do so. Um, some additional remodeling, and then build just one elementary. And again, we have to face that decision. Will it be a neighborhood K-5 school, or would we build it as a 3-5 during this K-2 or some combination of Option six is, um, Again, build one elementary, renovate the uh, Grove campus and J.C. McKenna, and again, uh, put addition on to J.C. McKenna, eventually demolish portions of Grove campus, again, with that idea of trying to put in some type of connector street between 3rd and 4th to make that a safer uh, traffic flow around there. Also, the older portions of that building did not have all the uh, windows replaced, as I recall, during the last construction project. It's an area that probably is the least energy efficient of our buildings. Would that be accurate, Joe? Oh. Um, so that was part of their, their thinking in this particular option. Land would need to be purchased for an elementary school, and that cost is about 40 point
So it's about 10, 10 7, 7, about 5 after okay. 7. Everything is clear as a table. And if you do the rankings in the column where it says total, it hopefully won't get you too confused about where they are. Okay. See if you can come up as a table. Or if you wrote uh, Pro Campus is the Pro Campus is the elementary and the intermediate schools. So it's those two. Because the other piece that this did is it got you started to talk. And I have a hunch when we go over to this sheet, there's going to be all kinds of questions, comments, um, things that will lead to more information needed. Okay? All right. So for those of you who were able to do this <laughs> and rank your own personal choices from one to nine, how many of you rank option number one, which is at the very top part of the first page, as your first choice? Okay, can somebody help me count here? Take your hands up. One, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Somebody want to do an audit there? Okay, so I got eight. How many selected number one as your second choice? One. Okay, how about third choice? One, two, three, four. Okay, now we're going to jump to the bottom of the scale. How many rank number one as your eighth choice? Okay. How about your ninth choice? Okay. How about moving on to option number two? How many rank option number two as your first choice? One, two. As your second choice? One, two, three. Okay. As your third choice? Okay, jump to the bottom of your list. Option number two is your eighth choice. Here. Option number two is your last choice. Okay. All right, let's look at option number three. It's actually four. You want clear. Okay, so we're going to just go down the page. Yeah. Okay. okay. So four, which is at the bottom of the first page. Everybody's clear with what I'm reading here. Okay, how many of you chose option number four in the first choice? <laughs> As your second choice. One, two, three, four. Okay. Five. Five, thank you. As your third choice. One, two. As your eighth choice. Many chose five as their first choice. As your second choice, one. As your third choice, as your eighth choice, two. And as your ninth choice, two. Okay. Option number six. How many of you chose it as your first choice? Second choice? Third choice? One. Eighth choice? One, two, three, four. Ninth choice? Zero. Okay. Option number seven. How many of you chose that as your first? One. As your second? One. As your third? One, two. As your eighth? And as your ninth? There's one. Was there one? Was there one here?
number eight. How many of you chose it as your first choice? Is your second choice? One. Is your third choice? Is your eighth choice? Number nine. How many of you chose that as your first choice? One, two, three. As your second choice? One, two. As your third choice? One, two. As your eighth choice? First options and seven no votes. So, so you're saying, Jeff, that two people would have had that at mid range because when you add 13 and 7 together and there's 22 people voting, there's two people that had it as the mid range. I just counted the number of people that had an option, a, a first no, option. Right. Yeah. First but I think that's the net effect of that. No. No, the count, count down. That's what right now, so it's not There's 14 in row for first option and seven no votes. That's correct. I feel like I'm getting the card ahead of the horse. I missed part of the last meeting, and maybe I'm just asking blind, dumb questions. But until you know uh, what amount of acreage that any one of these proposals would have, and what the cost would be added to these numbers, how does it make any sense to start ranking these? Exactly. I agree with you, Doug. And, and the reason really is to determine where we need to spend more of our time, given what's already been invested in this in getting the answers to generating the questions and getting answers to those questions and hopefully focusing our survey. Well, you've kind of because already eliminated, I think, oh, I'm sorry, you've kind of eliminated three and eight and seven of us or 25% never made a decision. 
Yeah, but we haven't gotten to that decision yet. All we're doing is taking a straw poll to see where, where we need to go next. Okay. So if it looks like there's a clear decision, or if those seven people now um, want to ask for the clarifying information that they would need to make a decision, um, that may drive us either closer to narrowing these options or may drive us closer to saying, we do need to get more information before we can go any further. And it may be that that information in itself will help generate survey questions for the rest of the community. But if we take nine options to the community, we're not going to get information from the Right, but I think at the same time, we don't have all the information, for example, the price of the land. Right. I mean, the price of the land, if we're going to even consider that as an option, needs to be considered with all nine of these options so that you look at the big picture, not a portion of the picture. I don't know how we can make a, a real intelligent decision here when you don't have all the information. You can pick and choose, but then keep in mind that you pick and choose without knowing a full, clear picture from the very beginning. And that doesn't sound very intellectual. And the, the, the reason for that, and I think I'm right wrong on this, Jim, is that eight of the nine options require land purchase. The ones that require purchasing um, additional property and demolishing or reusing it in town aren't showing up as ones that want to heavily be considered. So that narrows right away what we need to find out about purchasing them. So now we're looking and we, um, you know, it's 20 acres basically per site. John can probably give us a better idea, but I'm not sure that 20 acres um, in any very close proximity to the city limits is going to be that different in price. So I think it's a constant variable, but I might be wrong. Required for two sites, some mm -hmm. of the choices so that it, I mean, you just like say two X in your factory, mm -hmm. or you know, if it's X amount for 20 acres, then it's going to be two X for 40 acres. So, I mean, if that's it, yes, it's not in this. You know, there's there's two things that have to be balanced, and maybe the question has to be asked which is more important to the community? The needs of the district or the cost of the projects. And I think right immediately when I one of the ways that I did this was I completely got rid of anything that didn't repurpose facing the town. That was when I was like, okay, I got two minutes to figure this out. <laughs> I was like, okay, no, 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 no. That took away like four or five of the options away. And, um, but that was because my first criteria is, well, I think we need to address that issue. So if, if the replacing, uh, if replacing the purpose in JC Montana comes out strongest as the top option, and both number one and number nine, which have the most um, first, second, and third place votes go by their narrow margin um, between nine and two, do we need to spend a lot of time thinking about two elementary sites or not? I think it's important to still survey the community on that because I think we need to build community awareness through this process. But um, we can spend maybe less time on that in terms of figuring out exactly where those pieces of land may be. I know people like real details, but. There hasn't been any investigation of land purchases because I guess from a supply demand issue, I got it, you want it, the price goes up, but that's, the that's, price, what, that's why we haven't had a lot the of The price that. is really irrelevant. I mean when you talk if, if you if it was ten thousand dollars an acre and you only need twenty acres, it's a drop in the bucket compared to the price of the project. Yes, right? Exactly. Is that kind of why and that, it hasn't, that may be one of the reasons that the fund research didn't go into that. Okay, but if the land isn't available, it eliminates a lot of these approaches anyway, correct? It does. But you were willing to pay whatever the demand Warrants for the land is that that would seem that that's the conclusion you have to draw. That if I got it, you want it, you're going to pay a lot more money for it. And I'm I'm wondering if we're just calculating that in is that's just a given that we'll pay whatever the whatever the uh, seller wants for that property. That's the property we want. I'm not sure that's a good premise to work from. But. One of the, one of the things that I'd like to do is um, I'd like to slow down a little bit. If we've got a third of the people 